All I'm offering is the truth, nothing more. Here's what we know. Number one, more people are becoming financially independent today faster than at any other time in human history. Most people don't realize it, but we are in the golden age. We are in the greatest time in all of the history of man. It has never been more possible for more people from more different levels of income, background, education, and experience to become wealthy. Number two, the rules for achieving financial independence are simple. A, are you ready? Spend less than you earn and save, invest the difference. Save or invest the difference. This has always been the case. This is the wedge. And by the way, in an average job, working for a gas station or on the farm or working as a truck driver or a ship, uh, working on a ship at a, you know, average wage. But if you save a hundred dollars a month from age 20 to age 65, you'll be worth more than a million dollars at a hundred dollars a month, $25 a week, about three, four dollars a day. B is 10% of every dollar is yours to keep. What this means is you need to develop a habit from the beginning of your career throughout of cutting 10% off the top of your salary and living on the other 90%. Most people, as we said before, get their paycheck, spend it all. If there's anything left over, they throw it in the bank temporarily. Then they grab it out and spend it on something else. They look at their bank account and say, geez, we got money here. Let's burn it. You know, people have this unbelievable, they're almost like children. They've got to get rid of the money. So, C, $100 a month will make you a millionaire. $100 a month will make you a millionaire. Now, D is resolve in advance to prefer financial independence to status. Say to yourself, financial independence is number one to me. Status is number two. It's absolutely amazing. Do you know what we found about self-made millionaires? Is they never buy new cars. Why? It's because in a new car, there's several thousand dollars worth of depreciation. So what they do is they pick a car that they really like, they follow it in Consumer Reports and J.D. Power, and then about two or three years out, they go out and they look at cars that are for sale in that genre, and they look for ones with low mileage and good service records, and they buy a car that ten dollars or $15,000 worth of depreciation has been taken out of. And then they buy it, and they drive it for five or six years. They don't care. E is once you put it away, never touch it. And this is important. I'm going to write it in red. You see, many of us make the mistake of thinking that when you save money, you put that away so that you can have it. It's fun money. So when you decide, oh, I want to buy a car, I want to go on a trip, I, I want a boat, I want a motorhome, I want something, you go after this money. However, if you want to spend money on those things, set up a separate savings account. This is savings for your financial security. Once you put it into this account, you lock it in. It's like one of those post boxes where it goes in and it doesn't come out. You never, never spend it. Never spend it. I can tell you stories about how this will change your life. But please believe me, once you put it away, decide I will never spend it. As far as I'm concerned, it's gone forever. I will not spend that money. I will do whatever is necessary, no matter what my financial emergency is, but I won't touch my financial fortress. Never touch it. Number three, the values of money have never changed. Look upon money as something that has personality of its own. This is important because we know, A, money goes and stays where it is appreciated. And it flees from places where it is not appreciated. Money goes to where it is loved, to where it is cherished, to where it is respected. It's an interesting point, but you can tell your attitude toward money several ways. But the simplest of all ways is by looking how you treat the money you have. If your money is all in a scramble in your purse or your wallet, it looks like somebody threw up there <laughs> and it's all mixed up and all of the coins and all of the bills are all mixed in a mishmash, it means you're probably not doing very well in life. If your checkbook is misbalanced or mixed up or mismatched or you've got two or three different accounts here and there and you have no idea what's in them, if you have bills coming in and you have no idea how much they are compared to what you're going to have to pay, if your financial life is in confusion, it means that you don't respect money. And if you don't respect money, money will come by and not stay long. 
that will just visit, maybe even drive past. <laughs> but it won't come and stay. So therefore, you'll find that people who are very respectful toward their money, they carefully work out their checkbooks and their bank accounts. Their money is all very carefully, neatly folded in their purse, wallet, or pocket. Their coins are stacked properly or put in jars, or even better, put into a coin sorting thing and put into the bank. People whose financial affairs are neat and in order are always people who have more money and attract more money than those who don't. And the starting point, by the way, and a lot of people are looking away from me when I say this, the starting point is just to say, okay, from now on, I'm going to keep my financial affairs neat and in order. I'm going to sit down, and if it takes me a week or a month, I'm going to organize all my financial affairs. I'm going to work out to the penny what I have. I'm going to do an analysis and a budget of everything that I spend. I'm going to compare my income and my revenues against my expenditures. I'm going to look at what costs I have are discretionary and what are mandatory, what are fixed. I'm going to look at where I can cut back and where I can diminish and control. In other words, when you start to get your financial life meticulously in order by paying attention to your financial life, it'll change. If you take a little notebook, like those little spiral-bound notebooks, and you just simply write down everything that you spend over the course of a week, it'll change your whole philosophy toward money. Make sure that everyone in your family who spends money writes down one dollar and twenty-two cents for postage stamps, seventy-eight cents for a Coca-Cola, so and so for a donut. Just write it down. And then as you pay attention to this, begin to analyze it and look at it. And you'll notice extraordinary things. You'll see when you start to do it. You'll notice extraordinary patterns and you won't be happy. And you'll start to see how these patterns can be shifted and changed. And as you shift them and change them, how your whole financial life starts to fall into order. Just by the very act of observing your expenditure patterns. Number B, spend as much time analyzing an investment as you spend earning the money. Spend as much time analyzing the investment as you spend earning the money. Many people are very good in terms of saving their money or getting a bonus, putting it away. And then what they do, someone says, why don't you do this? Okay, here's a good stock. The only thing easy about money, as a wise man once said, is losing it. Money, Making money is very hard. Accumulating is very hard. A Japanese proverb says, making money is like digging in the sand with a pin. But losing money is like pouring water on the sand. So therefore, recognize that almost everything around you is an opportunity to spend or lose money. Number D is study every detail of the business. Don't be afraid if somebody wants to offer you an investment to say, well, great, could I see your financial statements? You're asking for my money. I would like to see your personal financial statements to see how well you've done with your own investments. Usually they'll make a bunch of excuses and you'll never hear from them again because a lot of these people can't. And every so often you'll get a person who will show you their financial statements and knock your eyeballs out. That's the one to invest in. You want to become wealthy, invest with wealthy people. Yeah, not poor people. Okay. F, self-made millionaires do not gamble, do not speculate, do not take chances. In fact, self-made millionaires have an aversion to gambling. What does that mean? It means that there's something about gambling they just don't like. There's something that is morally wrong with gambling. First of all, gambling is an attempt to get something for nothing, which is a moral obscenity and which is a cancer that destroys every society in which it becomes rampant. No further exegesis need be gone into. But the other thing is this, is they like calculated risks where they can apply their talents, ability, and intelligence to putting the odds in their favor. They don't like gambling. Here is a dangerous thought, and I've learned this over the years. Every so often, if you get financially ahead, you might find yourself saying, well, we can afford to risk a little. Have you ever heard yourself saying that? Well, we can afford to risk a little. Stop. That attitude assures that not only will you risk and lose a little, but you will risk and lose a lot. All successful people never concede or admit that I can afford to risk a little, which means I can afford to lose a little. No, you never think in terms of losing money. Never think in terms of losing money. You never, never, never. They say, well, the purpose of entrepreneurship is to take risks. Do you know something that's totally false? The purpose of entrepreneurship is to make profits. 
Nobody embarks on entrepreneurship to take risks and lose money. We embark on entrepreneurship to make profits, right? Right? What we do is we mitigate risks. The successful entrepreneur is the person who sails through the shoals of risks in order to get to the profit. The unsuccessful entrepreneur is the one who crashes against the rocks of risk and sinks. Your job is not to take risks. Your job is to make profits. And you make profits by minimizing risks. And if there's a chance you might lose your money, walk away. Walk away. The rule here is don't lose money. The two great rules for financial success are, number one, don't lose money. Number two, whenever you are in doubt, go back to rule number one. Don't lose money. Losing money is easy. Making money is hard. Don't lose money. If somebody says you've got to get in, you've got to get in, no. I learned from this multimillionaire businessman. He made me, he did not make me rich, but he made me rich because of what I learned from him. But what he did is he told me, he said, Brian, never rush into an investment. He said, investments are like buses on a busy street. There will always be another one along. Never be in a hurry. I still remember him telling me that, Brian, never rush into an investment. There will always be another bus along. And you know what? He was right. Number four, use the law of accumulation to get wealthy. The law of accumulation. And by the way, we say that you should start saving 10 to 20% of your income, right? You should save 10 to 20% of your income until you're financially independent. However, when we say that, we notice a very interesting thing is people avert their eyes from me. And why do you think they do that? It's because they say, if you knew what my financial condition was, you wouldn't be asking me to save 10 or 20% of my income. You can't save 10 or 20% of your income. Not if you're a normal person. If you're a normal person, you're spending pretty much everything you make and a little bit more besides, and you've got a nice big chunk of debt, and you dream of sometimes, somehow, being out of debt and maybe even winning the lottery, right? So if I say you've got to save 10 or 20% of your income, as far as you're concerned, that's just theory. That's great, Brian. That's just theory. When's the next coffee break? Because I can't even save 10%. So here is what I will suggest to you, which will turn your life around. Remember, if you love something, you set up a force field of energy around it. This force field of energy attracts more of the same thing. Like attracts like. Similarities attract similarities. So if you don't have any money, there's an old saying, it takes money to make money. Well, if you don't have any money, what do you do? You have nothing there. There's no no source of energy. So you've got to get something there. It doesn't matter what it is, you've got to get something there. If it's a penny, you've got to get something there. In the Bible it says, to those that have shall even more be given. But from those who have not, even that which they have shall be taken away. It's referring to the parable of the talents. And the talents, interestingly enough, talents is a form of money back in those days. But today it also is a form of money. What he meant was this, is if you have money and you preserve it and you take good care of it, to those who have shall even more be given because they will attract more. To those who have not, even that which they have will be taken away because they'll have nothing to attract. So here's what you do, is you make a decision. We all want to be financially independent. Is that correct? And we're patient. We don't expect to do it overnight because we don't expect something for nothing or a quick fix, right? Okay. So what we do is we say, I can't save 10% of my income, but A, by gum, I can save 1%. You can save 1%. This will constitute a major shift in the way you think about life. But the rule is this. Make a decision today that whatever you earn on a gross basis, you will save 1% and live on 99%. So let us say you make $3,000 a month, pretty much the average uh, family income in America gross. Well, that's $30 a month. Now, is it possible if you make $3,000 a month to save a dollar a day? If you budget your time, you could just, you know, cut off a Coke, cancel out a donut, scrap some taco chips. You could get a dollar a day. It will require the big S word, which is sacrifice, of course. Now, if you sacrifice, so you save a dollar a day. Now, you don't save a dollar at the end of the month. You take yourself an old fruit jar and you put it on your dresser and into that fruit jar, you put a dollar every single day. At the end of a month, you'll have $30. You take it down to the bank and you open up an account. This is your financial fortress account. This is an account that you never touch. This is the account that's going to make you a wealthy person. I promise you this will work if you will work at it. You just save $30 a month. Now, when you get something extra, 
By the way, the very act of saving $30 a month seems like nothing. But can you do it? Say yes. yes. And you live on the other 99%. It's not going to affect your lifestyle at all, really, is it? Okay, you, know, you just don't go out to McDonald's once a week. So what will happen is you put it away and you start thinking about that is this is the beginning. This is the starting point. Journey of a thousand leagues begins with a single step. I've taken my first step a dollar a day. It doesn't seem like much, but the next time you cash in some pop bottles, stick that in the old fruit jar. The next time you sell something out of your garage, stick that in the old fruit jar. You get a little bit of a discount or a bonus or something back that's unexpected or somebody pays a debt, stick that in the jar. From now on, all unexpected amounts of money go into the jar. And then at the end of the month, they go into the account. You will find, by the way, that this begins to glow like a reactor core. And it begins to attract money to you, little bits of money from all over the place. A nickel, a dime, a quarter, 50 cents, something you find on the street. And you put it all in. And as it grows, the energy source grows. It's like more reactor bars. It starts to grow. And it's only $30 in the first month. And it's 65 the second month. And it's 120 the third month. And then you get a chunk here and a chunk there. At the end of the year, it will not be $360. It'll be $500, $600, $700, $800. But you keep adding to it. And then you take it out and you look at your bank account and you look at that money and you pay attention to it and you love it. You love it. You say, this is it. I'm on my way. The first million starts with the first hundred, then the first thousand, then the first ten thousand. By the end of the second year, you won't have 360 times two. You'll have two or three thousand dollars. But the most remarkable thing is going to happen in the rest of your life. With the other 99% of your income, what will happen is you'll start to become smarter with that money and you'll be able to live comfortably on that and pay down your debts at the same time. And then one fine morning, you're going to say, why don't we put it 2% away? And so you start to save 2% and then 3% and do it as you're comfortable. Stretch a little bit, maybe set a goal. Say, okay, the first three months we'll put 1%. Then after that, we'll put 2%. In ninth month, we'll start 3%. At the end of a year, we'll be at 4%. At the end of 15 months, 5%, whatever. Set a goal. And pretty soon, I can promise you, in not more than a year to two years, you'll be up to 10%. And you'll be living on 90%. And your debts will be going down and you'll be paying them all off. You'll be a much smarter consumer and you'll be working much better at work. You're going to have money in the bank and you're going to feel a little bit different about yourself. And you're going to have another separate bank account over here, which is a college fund. And then you can have a bank account over here with money going in its vacation fund. Have one over here, which is a house fund. And you find yourself living on 90% and 80% and 70% of your income. Three years from now, you're going to have several thousand dollars in your account and so on and so forth the law of accumulation, it starts to roll like a snowball. If you will start it into action, it will work for you. But it starts off with something very simple, a dollar a day. You say, well, a dollar a day can't make that much of a difference. And don't tell me that it won't make a difference until you have proven to me by doing it that it won't make a difference. But I promise you, you can't prove it to me that it won't work because it will. And all the great fortunes started here. Do you know what our mistake we make? Is we say, when I get a big hit, then I'm going to start saving. You will never get a big hit. What you do is you start saving now, and then you get big hits, and you put it into the pile. Okay. Be gradually billed to 10%, 15%, 20% of your income. All self-made millionaires save 10, 15, 20% of their income. That's how they become wealthy. C, put every extra dollar away to build your financial fortress. Every extra dollar you get, put it away to build your financial fortress. And it'll happen far faster than you realize. Number five, use the two great principles of wealth. The two great principles of wealth are A, make compound interest work in your favor. Get that money in there and get it working. Make compound interest work in your favor. Remember, if you invested one dollar at three percent at the time of Christ, you'd be worth all the money in the world today. <laughs> compound interest is phenomenal. It's phenomenal. So make compound interest work in your favor, but get the money in there. And B, use dollar cost averaging. Use dollar cost averaging. Don't worry about the market or prices being exactly right. Unless, of course, they're grossly overpriced. Number six, the number one rule for success is frugality. 
Frugality. Practice frugality in everything you do. The three rules for success in real estate are location, location, location. The three rules for success in financial independence are frugality, frugality, frugality. When in doubt, don't buy it. And if, you don't, if you can possibly rent it, rent it. If you can get it used, get it used. Frugality, frugality in all your financial decisions. Practice the canary song. Do you know what the canary song is? Cheap, 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 cheap. Let people joke about how cheap you are until you reach the age of 55 and you're financially independent and they are scrambling, looking like deer caught in the headlights because they're broke and desperate and they're getting old and their job is no longer secure and they spent everything they made and a little bit more besides. And number seven, develop the quality of patience. Long time perspective in becoming wealthy. Develop the quality of patience. Be willing to hang in there. Remember, the average self-made millionaire takes 22 years from zero to one million dollars. Zero to one million dollars takes 22 years. And that's, you don't have to make a lot of money. You just have to do it steady, steady, steady. Be like the force of erosion. Bit by bit, year by year. Don't tell anybody else what you're doing. Here's another thing about self-made millionaires is nobody knows they've got money. You look at them, they can't tell that they've got money. They wear Timex watches and C&R clothiers suits and they drive used cars and they live in normal neighborhoods and mow their own lawns. Nobody knows that they're wealthy. Even their kids don't know that they're wealthy. It's probably the most important of all.